Crossing Peachtree Creek, The Curious Experiences of Jim Hawthorne By Craig Klein Introduction There are two great archetypes, two characters in this world that have created our circumstances and determine our future. They both have direct communication with what we may call science god, who grants them the power of life and death. The first is the legendary Goldilocks, the finicky decider. And the second the ever-complaining Karen, the one we all abhor. Our perfectly balanced planet, until now, was formed after a near infinity of universes, constantly created by this science god, was agreed to by Goldilocks as just right. The rest were dark and uninhabitable, or perhaps off a little and still uninhabitable. Her fussiness over material form included the cosmological constant, fine structure constant, quark and neutrino mixing parameters being exact. And 23 more. To be clear, science god was found by the Dutch philosopher Baruch Spinoza, in 1656, a Jew, who was excommunicated with holy curses by his rabbi, and forced to leave Amsterdam to become a lens grinder. His concept, Deus of Natura, became the slogan of Spinoza's pantheism, the view that God and nature are interchangeable, or that there is no distinction between the Creator and the creation. This was the dawn of the Age of Enlightenment. The laws of science, derived from the Latin word science ntia, meaning knowledge, awareness, understanding were both observable and proven by experiment. Unfortunately it also was heretical to all existing religions. The Goldilocks zone is now approved by God, as the best location for our current field of dreams. And once built, we came. If you get my pitch. As multicellular animal, s our bodies finally became a country inhabited by 30 trillion cells. Each cell is a miniature city complete with waste treatment, manufacturing, and power plants, a crematorium, and dictated by an authoritarian government. Rivers of nutrients and waste, telecommunication systems both by snail mail and intranet and last but not least a president to oversee operations and diplomatic services. Yourself. Yet Goldie's fate as the arbiter of what's just right for Earth included breaking everything she touched in the bear's house. The angry three bears, as the author Eleanor Muir illustrated in 1831, first burnt her alive, throwing her into a raging fire, then they cooled the corpse's charred remains with cold water, and finally left her corpse pinned to top of the steeple of St. Paul's Cathedral. This a world where big fish eat little fish. And our second goddess, Karen, also has our god's ear. She is entitled, loves to complain, and is a totally self-centered witch. How did someone so anti-social become so powerful, and why would science god listen? For the same reason we often act against our own interests. Misinformation not only thrives but will likely be the cause of the end of our species. During their rise to power Xi Jinping and Kim Jong-un were corrupted by their own self-importance, careless with the health of their subjects and capable of nuclear Armageddon. The wrong word from Karen would cause irreversible damage to us all. The god of science created our universe as a perfectly balanced mechanism in which we evolved along with our technology. Two hundred years ago, there were less than a billion people on Earth. Today, there are 8 billion and our population is still growing. We have now arrived to the Anthropocene age, the sword of Damocles hovers over our throats, moving slowly by climate change or a quick thrust by nuclear engagement. Resources are dwindling, robotic AI-assisted warfare is a new normal, and the hair trigger quivers. And now science god really listens to us and replies through chat GPT, makes announcement every second over the internet, and guides us with GPS. He no longer requires us to practice communication by prayerful, but near-useless telepathy. Why does he still allow evil misinformation to selfishly invade our lives? By putting faith and belief in viral information we are exposed to a Goldilocks downfall, by fire, flood, and humiliation. COVID has educated some people on the nature of the virus, how it commands cells to selfishly replicate itself and destroy the cell that helped it. The virus is not alive, it is simply RNA information that like the cuckoo bird, fools a host to make copies of itself. The following stories, drawn from my experiences over seven decades, are a remnant of constantly striving to find the path of optimization. Knowing the scarcity of time, and employing tactics my father instilled in me such as, make yourself indispensable, actually work. The act of creation combined with a blue-collar ethic has produced some grave errors and tangible successes. Writing it down and creating a multimedia audiobook is yet another challenge. 